Hello and welcome to the Quality of Mind Transforming Business podcast. And in today's episode, we have another one in our Looking At series. This is where we take a popular workplace topic and we explore it through the lens of quality of mind. You may have already had a chance to have a listen to some of the other topics in this series, uh, such as leadership, uh, productivity, vision and purpose, resilience, decision making. But today, we are going to explore that wonderful topic of listening. Now, first of all, what is the role, relevance and importance of listening in the workplace? Now, I think this is quite an interesting one because uh, similar to many things to do with the mind, listening actually has some very obvious things that it makes a difference to, but also quite a few hidden, more nuanced, invisible things. And today I want to explore some of those as well. So first of all, let's think how much difference does good listening versus less good listening make in the workplace? Well, I'm sure you've all had times when you've been highly frustrated because you feel like someone hasn't been listening. And as a result of that, it's made a difference to uh, the outcome of something. Or maybe you've been in a meeting which has been dragging on and on and on. And, uh, you know, as the time passes, you just think, well, no one's really listening. And the meeting could have been half the time if people have been listening properly. So I think most of us in the workplace would know that listening has the ability to get in the way and to uh, make a difference to our business, usually in sort of uh, stopping mistakes or wasting time. But actually, I think it's even more important than that. Uh, So let's just explore this a little bit more. Now, ask yourself the question right now, do you think you are a good listener? Now, most people who, you know, in the business world would sort of not be hugely arrogant and say, yeah, I'm quite good or usually I'm quite good. Um, The odd person might say they're not very good, um, but most of us think we're quite good. Also, funnily enough, if you ask, you know, do you know any of your colleagues or suppliers or customers who aren't good listeners, we'd probably come up with quite a few people. So we're probably not very good at spotting how good a listener we are. That's point one. Point two, if you ask people how do they know they're a good listener, that's a more difficult thing to answer because it's quite difficult to evaluate what good listening means. And what we normally mean when we say is someone a good listener is do we think they are able to retain the information we've given them? So it's usually about our ability to understand uh, knowledge and facts. So if you're going to give people uh, a shopping, you know, verbally give them a shopping list, did they remember everything on the shopping list? Or if you said, are you going to, you know, turn up at the meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock? Is that, you know, are they going to be there? Now, there's a lot more to listening than that, because if you like, you could separate it out into listening as a form of communication and also listening as a form of connection, which has much wider ranging benefits. But let's just do a couple of little scenarios to try and illustrate this. So the first scenario would be um, your boss says to you, so tomorrow we're going to have the meeting starting at 10.30. Uh, could you tell the team um, that and maybe they should get there sort of 10 minutes before and we're going to run for about an hour. Oh, and can you make sure that everyone uh, has read the meeting notes beforehand? Now, if we were to evaluate what good listening meant in that context, it would be your ability to remember the sort of three or four different aspects of that message uh, and then ideally sort of convey them to your colleagues. And if you didn't do that and maybe remembered, forgot to tell them to come 10 minutes early or forgot to tell them to read the meeting notes, someone might say, oh, that's not great listening. That's not really the listening that I'm really fascinated by. I mean, that is important, but not where I think the real magic is. So let's take another scenario. So this would be um, maybe the business leader says to the company, so we have a new strategy. And the strategy is that we want to further educate our customer to understand the differentiation of our product against the competition so that we can head to a more premium pricing strategy in the near future. And that's our number one strategy. Now, let's say you were listening to that. 
what does good listening look like in that? Well, you could say it's about being able to remember all those key points. You could think, well, actually, there's a lot of ambiguity in what that person was saying. Do I need to drive down into what they mean by um, differentiate? Or who do they mean by competition? Or what do they mean by near future? Or what do they mean by educate? There's lots of questions you could ask if you were if you were deeply listening to that to understand more about what the person meant. And really, depending on the role that you had in that context of listening, that would be relevant or not relevant. Because what one person might mean by near future might be different to what someone else means by near future. So often we would say listening is about understanding what someone else means at that still, at that kind of knowledge and uh, conceptual level. So I want to go one step further to talk to a slightly different kind of listening where I think there's lots of magic. Now, let's take another little scenario. Let's say um, a sales director goes up to their, their, their business leader and says something like, so I've been struggling recently to try and get the sales guys to um, win new business. I've worked with them on a few strategies, but often they're not working. And sometimes it's like going round in circles. And I'm struggling with them. And I'm feeling that we're not going to hit our year-end target if we do that. And I'm not quite sure what to do. Now, take a statement like that. Now, if you were a business leader, what's the right, what's the right reply? What should you be listening to in that Now, if you look at it from a conceptual perspective, there's actually a lot of things that you could listen to in that and address in your response. If you went through an MBA or or looked at all the business um, books, there'd be lots of things you could look at. Or maybe you should be helping the sales director come up with more strategies. Maybe you should be um, looking to change a sales director. Maybe you should be looking to change a strategy to give the sales director more time. Maybe you should be looking for a mentoring role or a coaching role etc etc there'd be lots of different ways you could respond to that or it could be that you listen to see that there's something that that person needs in that moment that is nothing to do with any of the content of what they've been saying they might just be having a bad day and they want to feel some support and they want you to understand that they're feeling some pressure now what is the right way to respond to that question or that statement what is the wrong way There is no one answer to that. There's no right answer. And we can't analyze that from our conceptual minds and say that would be the best response. And here's why. Because there is no right answer to that. Because in the moment that that is being said to you, only if you're listening from a very what we would call high aperture, a sort of deeply intuitive space, would you know what the right answer and response to that was. Because that is something human beings have the capacity to do. That is something that once someone's in a really high quality of mind, they are able to almost synthesize and hear behind the words and the content of the person and respond appropriately, whatever that might be. And that comes from a much more intuitive listening, a listening beyond the conceptual mind. Now, every single human being has that capacity, yet it does appear that in the workplace that is being squashed out of us. One could argue in society at large, but particularly in the workplace, as we're trying to drive performance, uh, speed, effectiveness, there's a lot more email communication, a lot more messaging. Even in some of the change methodologies we have nowadays, like Agile, it's all about transmitting information. Now, in some contexts, That's absolutely the right thing to do because you don't need to understand the nuance of the communication. You don't need to be understanding the psychological position that the person's in. And that kind of listening uh, is very fact-based and appropriate. But unfortunately, we seem then to listen like that for everything, even the much more nuanced human things that as we're working in a in a environment with other human beings we need to be paying attention to it. and we turn that off as we become more conceptual more evaluative and more analytical and less intuitive in our listening so very long way round of saying what is great listening well great listening is much more than just information 
Great listening is the ability to be present and understand in that moment intuitively what is needed as a response. You might say, well, is there value in that? Well, the value in that is huge, but often invisible. So if you look at what truly motivates people or what great high-performing teams have or organizations with an innovative culture or um, low turnover of staff, somewhere, if, if you look behind the words, you'll see that being valued and listened and recognized is highly important to those people. Conversely, if you look at lots of um, organizational staff employee surveys, very near the top of the surveys, something that comes back that they'd like more of is being listened to. And it's not just being listened to at a fact-based level. It's being recognized. It's being heard. It's being validated. And great leaders have the ability in not much time at all, in five, ten minutes of being present, to hear behind someone's words and truly understand what it is that the person needs or wants. And that's way beyond fact-based listening. So listening for communication, listening for information, of course, is relevant and important in the workplace. Without it, we wouldn't be very functional. But given we aren't all AI machines and we are human beings, there is much more to listening than just listening for information and getting it factually accurate. I'm sure many of you have been in a time where someone has been able, you've been in a conversation with someone where they've actually been able to repeat the points you've made at a fact-based level, but you still don't feel heard. And there may be other times when actually someone hasn't really understood what you've said or been able to express it back to you, but you feel heard and recognised. And that's because really... And this gets into uh, pointing towards the principles behind quality of mind. When we are communicating everything, that is just at a very surface level. There's something much more important going on behind at a connection level. Communication, if you like, is just a surface of, of connection. And in order to have people feel inspired, resilient, creative, we, we need to feel that sense of connection with other people. That's what great teams have. And often what's missing in organisations is that ability to feel connected and part of something and feel listened to. And not only is it fluffy, fluffy, nice stuff like feeling listened to and feeling valued, it's much more important than that. It actually enables us to work together with others in a synergistic way where we can hear something that one person said and it almost appears like it creates a spark for us to have our uh, another piece of understanding about something and we come up with great ideas we come up with new ways of working where we see things differently there becomes like an emergence in the room and something comes out of the room that is greater than the sum of its parts and that's where really uh, high-performing, innovative, nimble businesses thrive in that ability to bounce off each other in that way. And it's far greater than just listening in our sort of traditional sense. So you might be thinking, well, OK, that makes some, some understanding, some sense. I understand that. What do I do about it? How do I get myself some more of that? Well... If you've listened to other things in the uh, quality of mind arena, you'll probably know that what you need to do is a lot less than you think because it's much more about seeing, realizing and understanding the functioning of mind. It's not about trying to build rapport people using techniques or tools. It's not about trying to do active listening. It's not about trying to find psychological strategies to do anything, really. It's more just seeing something. And this is an intuitive seeing that any person has the capacity to see, regardless to their education, age, gender, ethnographical, demographical background. It's our, it's understanding the nature of the mind and it's understanding that when we're in what we would call a high quality of mind, a high aperture, there's an innate ability to um, 
feel connected and as a result of that listen and what gets in the way of that is our over reliance on our conditioned and conceptual personal sense of self and mind something which we we've, we've all been developing very nicely for the last sort of you know since we were about two years old um exaggerated by school and and the way that workplace looks at things and if you want to just a sense of what that is just reflect now on times when you've found listening and connection to be relatively effortless and intuitive and times when you found it really difficult to understand what's going on and you're confused and everyone else is confused and there doesn't seem to be any shared meaning you'll probably notice that something can go from feeling complicated, heavy, disconnected to clear and making sense quite easily, even though maybe nothing's actually changed on the outside. It's just that you've had an insight about it or you've managed to hear it differently. And that's a function of the mind. Also, you'll probably find that sometimes you, you find it easier to listen when the thing that's being talked about is nothing to do with you. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a colleague sharing an issue or a friend sharing an issue. Um, you, you can see the wood for the trees. You, you can understand more about what's going on behind the words. Why is that? Well, that's because you've got less personal thinking in the way. So when we're very attached to an outcome, um, when we think it's our job to listen, we're actually the worse we are at listening. It's a little bit paradoxical that the more we really, really want to listen to something, the more we get attached to it, it reduces our capacity to listen. So what's the answer? Well, the, uh, the bigger answer is to uh, carry on being curious about the role of the mind um, and how some of us are innocently invisible, invisibly in a misunderstanding about how the mind works. And through that inquiry, you'll start to find out all sorts of things. And one of those will be that your listening improves. If you want to know at a more tactical level, or you're still just playing around with whether there's anything in all this stuff, um, just try out a couple of things. And, and what I would suggest you try out is try going into some business conversations with less on your mind, not trying to work it out, not trying to evaluate it. Just go in with a more open mind, less busyness in the head and less attachment to trying to work it out. And that's a little bit like you would be if the thing wasn't important to you. Because you might find your ability to synthesize, listen more intuitively just comes online more organically and naturally. And then once you reverse join the dots to see that that can happen about anything, even the things that do feel important to you, you'll start to see how listening really works. Anyway, hopefully that has been something to get your curiosity going and that you've managed to listen to this uh, in a way that has resonated with you. Have fun being curious and see you next time.